So I really like what Tissot have been doing with their watches lately. They've come out with some pretty cool watches like the PRX, but they've also been upgrading their watches as well. Today I have the upgraded version of the Tissot Seastar 1000. Um, and I'm gonna get right into it. It comes in similar packaging, it's just a little bit different. Uh, it's a little drawer sort of thing here, and then inside you get a booklet. This booklet is basically a uh, functionality of the watch. Uh, nothing too crazy there. Inside you're getting a little diorama, I guess you would call it. I don't know. Uh, inside here it actually holds the information for customer service and the warranty card. Um, and then of course you get a watch. That's really it. It's all cardboard. Uh, nothing too crazy. It's actually maybe not as nice as the uh, original packaging that I got with the previous version, but uh, really not terrible. Now immediately when you see the watch, you're going to notice if you are familiar with the Seastar 1000, you're going to notice two main differences. Number one is the bracelet. Number two is the bezel. Now the bezel has changed and this is a very good thing. It's still ceramic. However, now it is engraved not printed. So previously it was printed in a silver color. It's a glossy bezel. So when you moved it around, the bezel would disappear. It would look almost like a ghost bezel in certain light. Now they have engraved it. So it looks good and you actually can see it in light, which is great. Uh, second is the bracelet. As I mentioned, they have upgraded the bracelet from the uh, previous version, which had a multi-link bracelet, which was sort of like a Jubilee, not that great. This is an oyster style bracelet with female end links, which is great. And then you have polished and brushed elements in the bracelet. So polished right down the middle, uh, the outer links are in brushed. And then the buckle is also significantly upgraded. That was probably one of the biggest problems with the bracelets on the Tissot Seastar 1000. They would have pressed elements throughout. This is now all milled. The whole scissor is milled. This is still pressed, which is not bad because uh, a lot of brands do this in a pressed element, so that's not bad. Uh, the only thing that is fully pressed is, of course, the diver's extension, but again, at this price point, a lot of diver's extensions are pressed. It's sort of an element that you're not going to use very often, so that is fine. Big upgrades from the previous version, and then you're getting three positions of micro-adjust. Not that bad. So uh, a lot of obvious changes, and then there's some really subtle changes that they made to the dial. Now the dial itself, I like a little bit better because it is less iridescent. So it's a more deep blue. It's not really fume in any way. It doesn't radiate, doesn't have a sunburst pattern. However, it is a deep blue with a slight, slight sunburst pattern. It's not really a heavy pattern. Um, and it's kind of hard to see. Depending on the light, you'll be able to see it. Uh, so they've moved away from that a little bit. Uh, and then the color match date wheel. They did away with the color match date wheel, which, you know, I liked the color match date wheel, but I get it. It's uh, now in white. It was black before because the dial was sort of black on the outer edge. So they made the color the, uh, of, the, color of the date wheel in black. Now the dimensions should be exactly the same and you're getting the exact same movement. So let's do quick um, uh, uh, measurements on it. 42.4, 42.5, um, and you have these little like scalloped edges or areas on the actual case which have um, polishing in them and you have that on either side. It's just sort of a design element of the watch. Uh, so it's a 43 millimeter watch. It does wear like a 43 millimeter watch. If you measure it at the bezel itself, um, you're getting 42.5 as well. So it's pretty much in line with the case. The lug to lug on here is 49.3. However, it is a little bit larger with the uh, bracelet 52.4 because the links don't actually fold all the way down on these female end links, but it's nice that you have female end links. The crown is a sizable crown, uh, but it's not huge. It's 7.2. Actually, it's pretty big. 7.2 is pretty good. Um, and then the thickness is a very respectable 12.8 uh, millimeters thick. You do get a Powermatic 80 that you can see from the back. As you could see, uh, the Powermatic 80, just an incredible movement for the, for the price of these watches. This retails for $725. However, I was able to pay 
just under $600 for this watch. Um, and that is a very, very good price. I think Amazon have these for around $620, $625, somewhere around there. Um, just an excellent watch for that price, in my opinion, uh, especially since they've upgraded the bracelet and upgraded that bezel. It really does change the entire watch into something a little bit more uh, able to compete with things like micro brands and other entry level uh, dive watches. This could now compete and it does uh, actually make sense to buy this over other watches, I think, in my opinion. Um, it's a good looking watch. I really do like the blue on blue. Uh, however, I wish the dial was a little bit more complicated. They put a fume and textured dial on the Seastar 2000. I wish they did something like that on here as well upgraded there as well that would have been really cool um but i get it they want you to buy that watch if you want something with that sort of dial on it um they're telling you to buy this if you want you know a more simple dial i get it, it makes sense but either way i wish that was the case you do get applied indices the loom on the previous version was pretty bad let's see how the loom is on this one we'll do a loom shot i'm going to show you what i have on my wrist then I'll throw this on my wrist and then we'll do a loom shot. But like I said, applied indices. And then you get the same hands, you get that same counterbalance T, which I'm not a huge fan of either. Um, they've not done that on other watches. I don't know why they insist on doing that with the uh, C-Star 1000 and 2000. I just wish they didn't do that. It doesn't make any sense. Um, and then you get like a paragraph of, of words right there just uh, telling you it's a C-Star, telling you the movement, uh, 300 meters of water resistance. Uh, of course, you're getting a screwing crown, screwing case back, uh, which is great for, you know, the 300 meters of water resistance. Also, uh, just to mention, you do get quick release on the bracelet. So they've gone all the way in upgrading this bracelet. Uh, they've done a really good job. Um, anyway, let me show you what I have on my wrist. Today I have on a Squale. This is the Squale uh, Corso Italiano, a collaboration with Water Watches. And this is a really cool white dial diver from the brand. This is the Artico, I believe they call it. And it is really, really awesome. Just a really nicely made watch with an Eta movement. Um, beautiful, beautiful stark white dial on there. Um, I don't typically like um, uh, NATO straps and really there is no change here. I don't love NATO straps, but I will wear a watch with a NATO strap on it. Um, does feel nice. Here is the Seastar on my seven and a half inch wrist. This is a basically a 43 millimeter watch. I measured it 42.6, uh, just about there. And then you have uh, a, a pretty good lug to lug on here, which is perfectly fit onto my seven and a half inch wrist. 12.6 millimeters thick or thereabout, really nice. The bracelet doesn't taper a lot. I wish it did. Uh, I always say that, but I wish that the bracelet tapered a little bit more. Um, but it's a really good looking watch. It's less dressy without that bezel, which I also like. It looks more capable with this bracelet and this bezel, in my opinion. Um, overall, I like the changes that they made. Uh, I really do appreciate them. And it's, you know, something that they probably listened to uh, videos that are on YouTube and, and articles that people have written about this watch uh, saying that the bezel is almost illegible in light. Uh, the bracelet, you know, stinks and they went and changed these things. I'm really very happy with that. Anyway, let's do a quick loom shot. Hopefully they paid attention there too, because I believe the loom on the original or the previous version, Seastar 1000 was not good. Let's check this out and see if it's any good. Okay. Well, I mean, it's not great. It's not bad. The indices are large, especially the triangle at 12 o'clock. Um, actually let's do bezel action. Yeah, so the bezel action hasn't been upgraded. It's the exact same bezel action. It's a little bit loose. It's very grippy. Uh, nothing too crazy. It's it's okay. Uh, that was pretty similar to the previous version as well. Uh, loom is basically the same as the previous version um, as well. They missed the opportunity to actually loom the bezel here. Uh, that would have been great because it's an engraved bezel. They could have filled it with loom. Um, but... You know, I guess they've done some upgrades. They didn't go all the way. Uh, I wish they actually paid attention to the bezel action. That would have been good. 
the bezel action isn't terrible, but it's not great. So, uh, you know, there's watches out there when you, when you turn the bezel, you're like, wow, that's awesome. Um, this is, you know, not that watch. Uh, the loom is okay. It's not great. It's not going to blow your socks off. Uh, whereas some watches like, you know, the SBDC 061, they have Luma bright. Those are extremely bright watches. Um, this is not as bright as that. Uh, this is nowhere near as bright and it's actually fading already because it is not liberally applied. It's thinly applied uh, across pretty decent surface area, but it's not very thickly applied, so it's fading pretty quickly. I think it's a very good looking watch, especially considering the price, especially that you get that uh, upgraded bezel, the upgraded bracelet, and the uh, Powermatic 80, of course. Uh, I think it's a really great watch from a really great brand. Um, and, uh, you know, there's a, still a couple of small shortcomings on this watch, but not a ton now. Before, there were a few too many for me to actually keep it. So I probably will be keeping this watch because I do like it very much. Anyway, tell me what you guys think in the comments below. I wanna hear from you guys. Please also don't forget to like, subscribe, hit that bell icon. It is super helpful for the channel and I very much appreciate it. Please follow me on Instagram. My Instagram is watchchrisblog. I have some links in the description. Those links are to Amazon. If you click those links and buy anything, it helps support the channel. It doesn't cost you anything extra. However, I very much appreciate it. Anyway. Thank you for logging on. I'll catch you guys in the next video.